Hello and welcome to the Economic Times Data Center Virtual Summit 2021, an event to recognize and establish the think tank of India's industry and their approach towards data centers. In this special episode, we bring you exclusive highlights of the event. First up, we bring you a special address by Matthew Herford of NetApp on building next-gen data solutions. We are the custodians of data. If you work in digital, if you deal with data, it's our responsibility, I think, to make sure that our industry holistically is a little bit more sustainable going forward than perhaps it has been in the past. But what is NetApp today? You know, when I talk to CIOs and executives, they often think of NAS. They think, oh, NetApp are those storage folks. They're nice people. We like them. We trust them. But, but they do with storage. But we've been doing far more than that over the last six or seven years. And we really are helping customers lead with data. We're helping organizations develop hybrid cloud strategies. Um, we're helping organizations understand how they can develop applications faster. And we're helping them understand how they can leverage data to really differentiate their customer experience. And when we talk about all this digital and digital disruption, really customer experience is the differentiator we're driving. So my call to action is focus on the innovation. Focus on using data to drive customer outcomes, but be green, be sustainable, and think about the future. And with that, I'd like to thank you. My name's Matt Herford. It's been a pleasure. Next up, we have Jayesh Ranjan sharing his take on building smart, secure, and green data centers. This is also a very topical seminar, given the fact that uh, India is becoming a very, very attractive uh, destination for some of the marquee data center players. We are also on the cusp of getting the personal data protection uh, bill getting uh, approved by the parliament. Most importantly, there is an increasing push towards uh, digitalization, particularly in the last 18 months. We have seen what kinds of uh, digital requirements are there, not just for enterprises or governments, but even for a common citizen whether he's in the urban area, rural area, from a working class or from the better off uh, classes, everyone's uh, lives are getting touched through this uh, enormous push towards digitalization. So the roles of data center becomes very important, but it is also very important at this point in time to consider uh, looking at data centers as an opportunity to get the sustainability agenda also on the forefront. The data center business is going to multiply enormously in our country. The personal data protection uh, bill, as I said, which very shortly will be made into an act, that also will have requirements of uh, storage of data locally. So huge amounts of uh, data, data stacks that are getting created will require localized storage. So that way, the business opportunity is enormous. But as all of us understand, Ensuring that everything is smart, secure, sustainable is also a very important responsibility on all the stakeholders. We will remain focused on this particular uh, important aspect in times to come so that uh, India can become a global role model in how do you encourage the data center industry without compromising on sustainability at all. So glad that you gave me a chance to interact with all of you. Thank you very much. Moving on, we bring you an inaugural panel discussion on leveraging the data center and cloud to create new business frontiers across sectors. Pradeep, I wanted to quickly bring you in, right? Uh, HSBC has made this in, in large chunks, this move to cloud, right? So how, how did you go about the cloud strategy? When we started getting into cloud uh, as a large organization, we realized it was never going to be, an, like I said, not an overnight affair. So there are multiple prongs, right? We've got to get the people right. We've got to get the, the regulatory framework right, uh, because you've got to ensure, you know, and with that regulatory framework comes privacy, security, everything, statutory norms that you need to comply with and so on. And then of course, you've also got to get the business case and the investments right, right? You don't want to burn yourself by going at the Cloud is something that you can easily go ahead and invest a lot of money in. And before you know, uh, you would, I mean, it can just go on, right? So we've got to get all those things, right? We've got to be prudent about it. So uh, if I were to just attempt the thought, and I hope I do justice to it, back in uh, about three or four years ago, roughly, we established baseline capabilities across all the three cloud models. What is going to be public for us, what is going to be private, what is going to be hybrid. 
we focus on understanding and addressing risks in each of these models right what like i was saying data security and regulation as you know are top priorities for a bank right that's that's pretty important for us so we have skilled our engineers to be able to exploit the whole potential again very clear uh, use cases on when we go with what so there was internal frameworks established as to what's the right thing and why it's the right thing so that's how our journey has played out deep punit i know that you pradeep and i hold very similar views on the future of this ecosystem but i want to hear from you uh what does your crystal ball say how does nap uh, net apps look look at it i think the world that we are getting into is that uh, data is going to become critical for nations and nations could be competing with each other for data and so it looks like that data and and this term that i you know heard in in one of the nascom events about 4 or 5 years back that data is a new oil right this statement keeps coming up in different forms and shape so one thing is very evident that data is going to be extremely uh, extremely important powerful uh, will get leverage in different forms and shapes whether it is enterprises uh, nations or the or the defense forces or like anybody else so firstly uh, from the crystal ball the significance that data assumes will go up exponentially and now i think enterprises are making decisions that which of it should be run on public cloud which of it should be run on private cloud or on prem and where do you find the hybrid story so i think that's what the other future is going to look like chirag quickly to you uh, in, in in the real estate sector and to you personally what is exciting in terms of the future of uh, data i think there is a tremendous opportunity three big events which has jolted this industry uh, which is gst uh, demonetization and now covid i believe that uh, you know innovation is inevitable and uh, there is always an opportunity to completely completely transform the way we have been traditionally operating you know because i i believe that government is uh, you know taking nimble steps towards digitization and i think uh, this is one area one segment one domain where we still need sizable change and it's probably because it's more state driven Uh, but i think opportunity is huge but invariably this has a potential to completely retransform or probably you know reimagine the real estate industry as such with the help of uh, with the advent of these technologies punit pradeep chirag i had a fabulous conversation thank you so Same much here. next we are in conversation with punit gupta of netapp to know about the role of data and challenges faced by organizations in managing data What are some best practices for getting your business strategy towards getting data center and cloud center right? What are some of the potential challenges that businesses can expect with data centers and cloud computing today? Firstly, the role of data uh, in today's world has changed significantly, and like the term that data is the new oil is getting used more and more. Uh, secondly, I think uh, you know, unlike in earlier times. when data used to sit in the data centers but today if you look at it uh, data is everywhere so it's on the core the edge on uh, phones tablets uh, iot devices so data is no longer confined to the data center unlike earlier times and that's why i think the role of both data center and uh, cloud computing will become increasingly more important uh in my view businesses will have to align very closely with both the data center and the cloud world given the fact that data is going to become their lifeline and data is going to sit in multiple places now i think the big challenge that a lot of enterprises are going to face is that data is growing exponentially uh, far more than what we have seen earlier and with 5g coming i think we will find that uh, this growth is only going to explode so how do you manage this data and especially when your platforms increase uh from the on prem world now to public cloud or hybrid cloud or multi cloud uh there are all kinds of environments that are coming up and managing data which is growing exponentially in this complex world will be the big challenge i think for enterprises if they can find a seamless operation to go manage their data and to manage their cost as data scales i think those are the uh, big issues that most enterprises will have to deal with thank you
Welcome back. Moving on, we bring you a keynote address on sustainability-driven innovation with cloud by Suyog Shetty, CEO of Nivea Solutions. As digitization has accelerated across industries, cloud and data centers have been the key catalyst in accelerating the spot in digital transformation. Many organizations such as Nivea have become trusted partners, helping enterprise leverage the business benefits of efficiencies, good economics, and risk mitigations which leads to sustainably driven innovation. As the adoption of technology and cloud in cloud and data center increases, cloud computing can play a role to reduce power consumptions related to compute and storage. Today, most enterprises want to get close to net zero carbon impact. Cloud and new edge data centers can provide better resource sharing by its simple multi-tenant track that reduces overall carbon footprint. Sustainability began as a natural and a very sustainable side effect of, of the shift from on-site data centers to cloud computing. Thus, we have a current push of, for more cloud innovation from providers, especially in the area of sustainability. Thank you. We have entered India at a very uh, right and a strategic time. And the kind of due diligence we are undertaking to ensure that we are at the right place at the right time. We've chalked out a very strategic roadmap for India. Over the next few years, we will be expanding our footprint uh, and putting a substantial amount of investment in creating our uh, journey across the India. And which is also to become one of the leading data center operators and organization to empower our customers through high quality products and services. As per me, a few of the other things which are very critical in this journey is that data center is a very extremely high capex intensive business. Hence, and it has a little long run in terms of returns. So uh, we are backed, we are rather very, uh, uh, we have an advantage in terms of, you know, we are backed by a very high profitable group. We have global expertise already in uh, within the group to run uh, data centers operations and efficiencies. We believe in superior built and quality Hence, it comes with the right certifications at the right levels. We have a long-term investment plan within the country. Sustainability is a very key factor for us from a group perspective, and that's a core of all the infrastructures we build. And last but not the least, we believe in a very high customer user experience. Hence, we would provide our customers a seamless experience of technology and a better high-class uh, infrastructure facilities. In the last two years, and every enterprise in India are looking at digitizing a lot of their workflows. And we've been uh, you know, um, um, playing key roles in kind of driving this transformation across various you know, um, uh, companies uh, in India today. So what we do today on cloud, uh, we have three to four main verticals in which we operate, uh, starting off with infrastructure modernization, uh, uh, where we come in and help organization migrate their workloads from on-prem to cloud, uh, right? Which is the first step in their digital transformation. And then kind of giving them the agility and scale which come with cloud as well. The second uh, a big area where we are helping enterprises is in terms of modernizing their applications. So we have a, a large chunk of uh, work today where we are helping organizations both, uh, you know, whether it's a greenfield or brownfield applications uh, to, be, to, to be set up on clouds. The third vertical where we, where, where we, are, we are kind of, you know, doing a lot of inroads is on the data part of it. Most of the organizations, uh, you know, both in India and outside India, uh, enterprises, especially enterprises, have multiple data sources. So we are building, trying to help these organizations to, you know, reduce the data silos, uh, you know, and makes and, and help them make decisions based on the data available across uh, uh, various data sources within the organization. Uh, we do have a platform called as Lander, uh, which which allows you to kind of build the right postures and and and, and set up some cloud. Uh, and also uh, integrate with the cloud uh, security solutions uh, to ensure that you know uh, you start your uh, journey with, with more confidence when 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 a lot of these uh, data and applications are multi cloud is a, is a very important uh, strategy for organizations to adopt and in the, in the world wherein things are moving digital from the iot applications ai ml metaverse is happening so many things are coming up on internet everything, mobile applications or maybe any kind of a load for which you are depending on cloud. Cost may be another advantage, low latencies, edge computing, CDN. So, so there are so many factors around it, uh, which may offer you kind of advantages uh, with multi-cloud service providers.
welcome back to the Economic Times Data Center Virtual Summit 2021. In our next session, we bring you a technology leaders panel discussion on emerging technologies in data centers and what does the future look like. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, I, I'm pleased to welcome our esteemed panelists here. We know, you know, given this increasing shift in investments in cloud infrastructure, do you really see the data center the traditional way it has been even surviving? Um, and therefore, the potential of investments that you make into these technologies support these data centers. Do you see that that will, uh, that you know, in the long term, that will still be there? Uh, there would still be room to do that? Every organization will move towards the cloud because of it gives you scale, it gives you, uh, and, you know, paper service, it gives you a lot of, lot of stuff. But then you need to also look at that uh, from your regulatory compliance perspective, from your data perspective, that how much that is actually a tick mark because Let's keep in mind that these cloud partners are also evolving. If you look at the native capabilities which the cloud uh, platforms are building, it is actually, you know, every month you see an you know, increase. So we need to see that, we need to marry that what is required for you and what is that you can put on the public cloud, what is still can be in your uh, data centers. So from journey point of view, I would say that you need to look at data center as it is, it will not stay. It will not stay where you are. The only thing is the direction you need to take, whether you want to see co-location may be a good interim solution that you don't want to invest in a large data center. You can actually co-locate, pay, use uh, you know the services, what they're providing you and parallelly probably chalk out a strategy for your cloud journey. So let me come to Bharat, whether you look at in-house data centers or cloud infrastructures, what are the low hanging fruits? Uh, or low-hanging areas where where you know organizations can leverage automation or AI ML capabilities and what kind of capabilities do you see clients leveraging? I'd like to start with the churn prediction, right? Uh, churn churn customer refers to the amount of customers uh, who would end up staying back or who would, uh, are you know probable to leave you, right? So there are a lot of uh, pre-determined AI ML models available with a lot of CSPs which can be leveraged in a more of a plug and play model to you know enhance your predictability of who's going to leave you, right? So that is one area, right? Another area uh, which I can focus on is a document uh, AI, right? Doc AI, like you call it. So, I mean, irrespective of the industry, there's a lot of documents that needs to be processed. So the OCR capabilities, in fact, we have implemented this for a lot of our banks, right? So the whole customer experience has been enhanced uh, by using OCR technologies where you just scan your other, scan your pan, and all your details are already captured. So these are some of the areas where you don't have to have a data science team or you know data scientists sitting there to do a lot of heavy lifting. These are all pre uh, you know modeled ML algorithms available in a plug and play model. Um, what are the other factors that are actually making organizations to use some of these emerging technologies uh, you know for for infrastructure management? Uh, Shiji, any thoughts? And I think we have moved on from the cloud analyst strategy. Uh, the decisions have to be taken based on different um, parameters, like what is the business objective that we are trying to achieve? Uh, what is the cost of moving the cloud versus hosting uh, otherwise? Do I uh, keep storage also in the cloud or do I dually compute? Um, do I need faster decision making uh, nearer to where the action is? So then I have to decentralize and have edge computing, uh, you know, as well in the architecture. Um, you know, so so there are multiple parameters, business continuity, security, you already talked about. Um, so there are multiple parameters that you look at and then say this workload, 100% it makes sense uh, to take it in the cloud. Next up, we have a presentation by Vinod Javur of Adani Connex on redefining the next generation data center infrastructure. Happy to be part of this discussions. What we believe as to be a, 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 a futuristic look forward of how data center will be need to be constructed and how it will be evaluated from our end customer perspective. This is something you see on the screen is the under construction DCs, which we are doing at Chennai and then it's part of the phase one construction. Um, and uh, uh, the whole campus will be about 33 megawatt for us on that. Uh, what is Adani Connects? Uh, uh, Adani Connects, as the name suggests, it is the amalgamation of Adani and Edge Connects together. We have got plans uh, of uh, uh, building up to close to about 1000 megawatt of data center um, capacity in India in about decades time, about this one gig, uh, gigawatts of that. 
Thank you very much. Thank you to the ETT. Thank you very much. Moving on, we have a special address by Sachin Bhalla on the COVID-19 situation, opportunity for the future of data center. Hello, everyone. You know, look forward to uh, you know sharing my views on how data centers are evolving, how they are becoming more flexible, scalable, reliable, and sustainable. Let's start by uh, having a look at how the world is being disrupted. You know, if you look at last 15 years. And let's look at the music as as one test case. We used to have uh, cassettes, and that was disrupted by uh, CD players, and that even that was disrupted by uh, MP3 players. And now, if you look at music, it's all in the cloud, and that's the level of disruption we are seeing in the world today. An interesting thing is these disruptions are not incremental disruptions; they are. really fundamental different way of doing things digital is at the base of almost all of the big disruptions that we are seeing we are living in a world where digital is disrupting everything but we are on the other side we are on the data center side which benefits from all of these disruptions if we look at uh, how fast the the data is being generated i mean we are expecting a 500% jump by 2025 we are going to see a 50% increase in electrical footprint of all data centers by 2025 not a good news for the environment and we have to see what we can do about it but that's the level of growth we are going to see in in data centers and we are going to see good growth in the colo data centers at the same time we are also going to see a huge growth coming in the edge data centers because a lot of new use cases a lot of new applications are coming up which would require a far higher uh, latency needs far higher response times at the same time we also see that more and more executives are saying they would want their data centers to be more self configuring so a lot of disruption is going to happen on the on the data center side as well but good thing is that all of us who are uh, in, in in this meeting we are on this right side of this curve there are shrinking industries and there are growing industries and i would say data center industry falls in the green bucket and it probably is is going to see a much higher growth than than what we are seeing in the shrinking industry so so good news for all of us at the same time we should also be mindful of what are the kind of disruptions that are happening in data centers now we are one of the the, the big players in in data center infrastructure space and as we see it i think four big disruptions four big trends four big changes are going to drive the future of data centers uh, in india as well as across the world the four things are efficiency sustainability adaptability and resilience and when we look at creating data centers of future we have to see that we are taking care of all these four points i would encourage all of you as you look at planning your data centers that you take these four filters and 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 see that you have given enough thought uh, on on these four pillars uh, of future data centers data centers are big consumer of resources i think the onus is on us that we uh, build greener data centers i think that is a ask that the next generation will have from from us and and we must look at uh, using the right technologies using the right infrastructure using the right platform to make sure that our data centers are are green thank you in our last session amitesh kumar sinha from the government of india shares his take on data center standards and future trends understanding the india landscape the meti initiated digital india policy in 2015 and since then lot of e governance services have uh, have come on board now today we are seeing a very uh, uh, big generation of data from all corner uh public or private uh we are also witnessing huge online payments all works going digital emerging technologies also playing their role we have lot of uh, iot uh, artificial intelligence machine language blockchain technology uh, upcoming 5g technologies these technologies are going to generate huge data and and because of uh, generation of data the storage becomes very important when storage becomes important uh, obviously the need of data center also becomes important 
and uh, in that context uh, in the ministry we are seeing india as a global hub for uh, future data center thank you so much